Live Network and Out and About newspaper. This is Out and About Today. Good evening and welcome to Out and About Today. I'm Pam Wheeler. On tonight's show, Brent sits down with Chris Sanders and gets a recap of TEP's recent Advancing Equality Day on the Hill. Later in the Entertainment Outlook, Chuck will preview this record-breaking Nashville Film Festival. But first, we open the show with our Buzz About segment. Tonight's topics include last month's HRC Equality Dinner, the Religious Freedom Laws, and Nashville Cares Dining Out for Life. I'm joined by co-hosts Brent Meredith and Chuck Long, and tonight's special panelist guest, everybody, who do you think it is? It's Chris Sanders <laughs> of the Tennessee Equality Project. Thanks what a for having me. What a build that up. was a build up. I, I better know. perform tonight. <laughs> we love having you on. You're, well, you're our you. most frequent guest, I think. Uh, I guess yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Since Steve the Martin of the show, yeah. I guess, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're coming up on He's 10 years. Like He's a, probably like a 50-timer. We need to have jackets. I'll take them. All right, let's talk first about the HRC Equality Dinner last month. I just like to talk about it. Um, I don't know. It's, it's one of my favorite events. I don't get out much. I'm a baby now. <laughs> so there was a lot of reasons to celebrate. There were a ton of candidates there. Everybody wants our vote. Ten years ago, nobody wanted our vote. We right, were begging people to show up. I know. And Carl Dean gets the Equality Award. Right. We're going to have some pictures. Uh, so, Chris, just describe the differences between then and now. Sure. Because the, the theme that night was a look back, a look forward, a look now. Right. 2007 was the watershed election for Metro that changed everything when candidates more and more began seeking our vote. And then after Mayor Dean got elected and began actually doing things, the first executive in the state actually to do things became safe. He survived. Mm -hmm. He thrived politically. Uh, and um, all the other candidates are coming in after his coattails, I think. So that's, that's really the short version of how it happened. And I'm just curious, are all the candidates for mayor uh, friendly to us? I know there were several there. But I think most of them are and they're getting friendlier. Um, you know, I'm happy to have their support. Uh, it's interesting that some have waited so long to show it. Yeah. I took a picture. You all missed it. We, I with, saw it. You did. It was good. It was. <laughs> And I, I, of course, asked him to be on the show, and he said yes. I told him, reminded him, you interviewed him on the slide, um, and he said he would be on. So we're going to follow up with that. Good. Let's get him live on the phone. No, we're not on the show. Hey, you, you know, but one thing, though, when you're talking about the HRC dinner and all the candidates being there, which is obviously great, one of the things that is interesting, and we're going to talk about this in a little while, but the whole thing over the Religious Freedom Act that has been so on the news, you know, mm -hmm. for weeks now, but the fact that though some of those Republican senators still sided with Mike Pence, even when Mike Pence made such a huge goof and snafu and mm -hmm. all of that. It surprised me that some of those, and, and even presidential candidates, Republican presidential candidates, still sided with him, even when they said you're on the wrong side of what's you know being popular right now. Mm -hmm. Right now they're backtracking a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the, the the issue there is that our community is partly at fault by repeating the name of the bill. We shouldn't be calling it a religion bill. We, sh we don't want to debate religion with the wider culture. What we want to debate is discrimination. And when mm -hmm. you call these bills discrimination bills, it's easier for Republicans and others to be against them. If you call them religion bills, then those on the right or anywhere right of center have a hard time opposing them. And we really need to reframe the language on these things. So how does that get done? I mean, Last year when we had the Tennessee bill, we consistently and only called it the Turn the Gays Away bill. That's all we called it in the mm -hmm. news. And that helped a great deal. So let's talk about where we are with the Religious Freedom Act. And some folks may not know what it's trying to do. So the, the law, the, I know you're not going to like this language, but the Religious Freedom mm -hmm. Re Restoration Act says the government cannot substantially burden a person's ability to follow their religious beliefs. Right. And proponents say the law will prevent the government from infringing on people and their ability to exercise their religious beliefs. So I know the show's pre-taped, so who knows what it's going to be when, when we air. Indiana passed it. Like you said, mm -hmm. the government, the, um, the governor said, no, I, you know, I'm for it. Staying like it is. And then he's backtracked. Yeah, because of all the immense backlash from, mm -hmm. I mean, all areas of the country. Yeah. That's right. Um, other governments are saying we're not sending any dollars there. The NCAA tournament, which the Final Four is coming up, wanted, you know, there's been chatter about that moving from Indiana. Mm -hmm. Major corporations. But, you know, the interesting thing to me, too, was when he basically, this is so how, to me, politics becomes insane, is 
He was so adamant and arrogant when George Stephanopoulos was interviewing him on ABC that time, and he would not answer the question when he kept saying, is this about discrimination? Mm -hmm. He kept saying, George, and all. And as soon as they got that huge backlash, he was like this different person. It was like an actor. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I was playing the bad guy, mm -hmm. now I'm going to play the good guy. I mean, it was a total about face. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's amazing to me. Well, I was going to, I was going to t touch on what Chuck said. It went from not only saying no, not answering the question, but no, I'm not going to look at the bill. No, it's fine. And then all of a sudden, as well, we might take a look now and yeah. write, make sure we write into it that there is no, it is not discriminatory. So I mean, again, it was almost like, was that an admission of the previous question? Of course it was, but it was finessed language. It was mm -hmm. acting. Right. Yep. And so where do we see this going? Because our state, you called it a mini indie mm -hmm. uh, before we started taping. But it's dead in the water right now, right? For now, it can be brought back next year. So do we see this as the next, especially after marriage equality happens for yeah, us? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. If you look at when the bills get filed, it happens after a southern state gets marriage equality. North Carolina is facing a slew of these kinds of bills. Oklahoma did. Alabama. So that's, it's the next session that we've really got to be prepared for. We always have to be prepared. Next one's going to be bad if right. we're not ready. Right. So um, it will allow opt-outs for local government officials who don't want to marry or maybe even give licenses to same-sex couples. And this is all assuming things go well in the Supreme Court, which I think they will. At the end of this month, they'll be, you know, yeah. taking it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I know we're right around the corner, and that's going to be crazy if we're sitting here not talking about yeah. the things we've been talking so about. So next year is the key test in the legislature for us. So we need to remember that, everybody out here to support Tennessee Equality Project. So I wanted to mention, did you have something else to say? Only that I think it's so important to, that everybody realizes how important it was that people spoke up from mm -hmm. all walks of life yep. in all areas, and that it's so important that we continue to do that. You know, as soon as that happened, you know, there, that, that it, we started speaking up in mm -hmm. Arkansas, and, and if we need to in Georgia, and if we need to in Tennessee, right. we've got to keep the fires burning. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because backlash changes things. It does. Yeah. And money, money talks, you <laughs> right, know? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay, I did want to mention an event where all, um, we all stand behind, and that's Nashville Cares Dining Out for Life. Mm -hmm. It's the 13th annual. It's April 21st. It's this month. You can go to the participating restaurants, and a percentage is giving back to Nashville Cares. Mm -hmm. Where are you going? I haven't made, made my reservations yet, but we always go. It's one of our favorite events that, that we celebrate. And, and I love it, too. Uh, I know all restaurants can give, can't give, you know, the, the same percentage that others do, but I just think it's great that all these restaurants participate. Well, and some of them I know do it the following day for lunch right. or breakfast right. if yeah. you can't right. make it And that's what I'm going to try to do, I yeah. think. I think it's both, called yeah. brunch. They do add a lunch time, so check that out, NashvilleCares.org. Yep. Any parting words from anybody on anything? No. I just, say down, keep, good. I just say we keep <laughs> fighting. I'm going to say that over and over and over. We, we don't want to be quiet. We want to speak up. You know, it's my Larry Kramer. We're just working on the normal heart play, and I'm thinking you've got to speak up. Okay. Right. Well, after this, I'm going to be talking more with Chris. So I know. You guys will be right back. Yeah. So stay with us. When we come back, Brent and Chris continue the political talk in our next segment. <laughs>